In the last video, you learned about the discrete random variable and discrete distribution. If you remember, discrete, what's unique about discrete uh, random variable is that it's countable. In this video, I'll talk about the continuous random variable and the continuous distribution. What's different about the continuous random variable is that the, it's measurable. So for example, amount of rainfall, amount of milk a cow can, ex you can extract from a cow, things of that nature. If, that, if, you, if something is measurable, it's considered to be a continuous random variable. So in the continuous world, there's a whole bunch of distributions. And but in this class, we'll uh, focus on two of them, uniform distribution and the normal distribution. The thing about to remember about continuous variable or continuous distribution is that whatever the case is, at the end of the day, what we'll do is we'll find the area underneath the curve of the graph, whatever that curve or whatever the area could be. And it involves a little bit of calculus, so I'm not going to go into details, but what happens is that if you find the area in the continuous world, if you find the area, that turns out to be exactly the same as probability. So what we'll do is for both distribu or uniform distribution and a normal distribution, we'll find the area underneath the curve, and it's both have different shapes. And once we find the area, that's equal to probability. So keep that in mind. So moving on to distri uh, uniform distribution, the shape of this uniform distribution is a typically typically a rectangle, and it's defined to be a over here, b over here, a representing the lower end and B represent the higher end. And then to find the height, the formula for that is 1 over B minus A, so basically 1 over high end minus low end. And so we'll use this to figure out the area, for example, like this area. So if you look at this area, you notice that it's a rectangle. So we use the formula for finding the area of the rectangle to figure out this area, which is the same as the probability. So, let's look at the example in the lecture notes. The question says, an electricity company wants to study the electricity distribution system. The electricity is measurable. It aims to distribute electricity uniformly between 124.5 volts and 125 volts. What is the probability that it distributes electricity at a voltage greater than or equal to 124.5 volts? Okay. So it's uniform, and it's, I know it's a uniform distribution problem because it says so in the problem. Electricity is uh, distributed uniformly. Okay. So that's how you know it's a uniform distribution problem. If that's the case, the shape would be a rectangle, so I drew the rectangle here. And the voltage is at a greater than or equal to 124.5 volts, so it's over here, so I'm going to draw a line here. And all the distribution or continuous distribution cases, next thing you will do is either shade the left side or the right hand side. So you have to determine which side do I shade. In this case, I'm going to shade the right side to this line here because the problem says uh, distribution greater than or equal to 124.5 volts. This line represents a, a number line, so to the right means greater, to the left means less than. So the problem, since the problem says greater than, I'm going to shade this side. So if you remember from uh, geometry, the area the rectangle is length times the width. Length being this length here, and the width or the height is here. Right. So what's the length here? It's a difference between 125.0 minus 124.5, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so that's the length. I figure out the distance between this point and then this point. What about the height? Well, I'm going to use this formula right here, which is 1 over 
point zero minus one hundred twenty three point zero. Remember, this is the B high end, which is here, and the low end, which is over here, not this. It's a common mistake. So you use this number and that number. So the height is one half, or 0.5 either way. So 0.5. If you multiply that two, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which is 0 0.25, which is equivalent to 25%. To go from the decimal to a uh, percentage, just multiply the decimal by 100. So what does this mean, 25%? Well, this means the company distributes electricity at or greater than 124.5 volts about, or exactly 25% of the time. So this is how you do a uniform distribution problem. Draw the graph, shade the right side, correct side, figure out the height, figure out the width, or the length, multiply the two numbers, you get an area, and that is the same as the problem. So let's move on to normal distribution. Normal distribution. So the picture for normal distribution looks like this. It's a bell curve. So let's say I shade this here and I want to find the area over here. The problem with the normal distribution is that it's an area underneath the curve. The area underneath the curve, to find the area, that requires calculus. It's really difficult to figure out the area if it involves a curve. So we cannot manually figure out the normal distribution. So there are a couple ways to go around that. One is to use a table, which is at the end of your book if you have the physical book. It's a table for normal distribution, and then depending on what this number here is, you can't find the area. The other way is to use Excel, which I'm going to show you in the next segment. But to understand how how Excel calculates things, I'm going to show you how what's involved in figuring out this area. So if you read the lecture, the function or the equation that corresponds to this curve looks like this. Okay. Now I don't expect you to remember this, but it, as you can see, it involves a complex formula in order to figure out this area. It turns out this is very difficult for mathematicians as well. So we want to simplify this a little bit to figure out this thing. So what we do is what we call standardizing. Where we agree to say, okay, I'm going to make the mu, which is over here, zero, oops, zero, and then sigma to be one. And it simplifies this formula quite a bit. And what, the, what it does to the graph is that, so this is standardized normal, is that it makes this horizontal line the value of z. So what happens is that if I find the value of z, I can quickly figure out what this area is. So what it does is, is that it makes the normal distribution standard, what we call the standard normal, which makes the bottom line the value of z. So if you see either mu is zero and sigma of one, or if it's standard normal, what you do is what you're doing is finding the z. 
So how do you find that Z? The general formula for Z is this. X minus mu over sigma, if we're using population variables, or if you're using the uh, sample, it looks like this. Either way, it's the same. So once you figure out the Z, we use the Z value to figure out this area. Let's figure out, so let's do a sample example how to figure out Z. Let's say you took a test, a standardized test, and it's a normal, normal distribution uh, problem, or normally distributed test scores. And then the mu was 45, the mean, and then sigma was 10. Your score was 65. What is your Z? So, Z is X, which is a given number, the one you're trying to figure out. So in this case, that's gonna be 65 minus the mu, in this case is 45, divided by the sigma, which is 10. This would be 20 over 10, or 2. So if you're doing a problem, how do you know it's a normal distribution problem? For one, the problem has to state it's a normally distributed problem, or normally distributed problem and or if the problem has the mu and then the sigma, that's a tip to say, oh, I'm giving you a normal distribution problem. So if you see one of these things, or the word normally distributed, you know you're doing a normal distribution problem. Once you figure out the Z, I'm going to use this Z value in an Excel to figure out the area underneath the curve, which I'll show you in the next segment. In module five, there are a few numbers you should be able to calculate. One of them is the Z score. The formula for Z score is down here, X minus mu divided by sigma. So in order to calculate the Z score, you need three things, X, mu, and then the sigma. X is the number you're trying to analyze, or the given number. The mu and the sigma are either given to you, or you need to calculate them. In this example, we'll calculate both the uh, mean and the standard deviation and use these functions here. So, let's say you have a friend who is taking a biology exam, and you have an algebra exam. And for the algebra, it's worth 100 points, and you scored 80 points. And for the biology, your friend, it's worth 200 points, and he scored 160 points. So percentage-wise, you both did equally well, 80%. But you want to know how much better you did relative to your classmates. So that's where the Z-score comes in. The higher the Z-score, you did better within your uh, classmates. So let's calculate the Z-score for you and then your friend. First, I calculate the average. This is the average of all algebra test scores. And the next thing I need is the standard deviation. So I calculate the standard deviation here of all these scores. And to calculate the Z score, the formula is X minus mu divided by sigma. So X is your test score minus the average, which is 56.41 here. Whole thing divided by B23, which is 22.72. So let's do the same for your friend. Calculate the average, standard deviation, and then Z score is his score 160 minus the average divided by the standard deviation. So the Z score for you is 1.04, Z score for him is 0.332. Again, the higher the better. 
And one of the things about the z-score is if you get a score of z-score of zero, that means you're exactly at the average. So in that sense, you both did above average, which is good. But since you have the higher score, you have a higher z-score, 1.04 compared to 0 0.332, that means you did better than your classmates, much better compared to your classmates than your friend did relative to his classmates. That's one way to use a z-score, to compare two different uh, categories. So let's look at a word problem. And this is a normal distribution problem. What percentage of students score, score between 50 and 60 points given that the distribution is normal and mu is 45 and sigma is 10? Answer this question with a sentence. So I need a short sentence to answer this question. So here's the deal about the normal distribution. You can always tell if the word problem is a normal distribution problem because the problem has to state it's a normal distribution problem. Also, if it's a normal distribution problem, the problem has to give you the mu value and then the sigma. So this problem is clearly a normal distribution problem. So that's for the first thing you need to know, identify it's a normal distribution problem. Second, if it is a normal distribution problem, the steps are always the same. There are always two steps. First step is to calculate the z-score using the formula we just used. And then the second step is plug in the z-score into either the norm.s this function or norm.s this function if you're using Excel 2007. If you're using norm.s this function, there's going to be two arguments, the z-score and then the true or false. For the norm.s this function for this class, it's always going to be true. So you don't have to worry about the case where it's false. And then if you're using norm as this function in Excel 2007, it assumes that true situation, so you don't have to put the true in. So then you only have to put in the z there. Okay, so I'll do, I use both to calculate this, to answer this question. So the score of 50, I need to calculate the z-score. The z-score is 50, which is a given number, minus the mu, which is 45, divided by 10. So the score of 50, the z-score is 0 0.5. For the score of 60, the z-score is 1.5, which is calculated by taking 60 minus 45 divided by 10. So for the score of 50, I use norm as this function. So the b11 is the z function that I just calculated. So this is the probability. It says area, but again, if you remember, the area is the same as the probability. So by using the norm as this function or norm as this function, what I'm really doing is figuring out the area underneath the curve. But that's the same as the probability. So this is actually the probability. For the score 60, I use the norm dot s this function. In that case, I need to know where the z score is, which is 1.5, comma, and then it's always true. So I put the true there. So for a score of 60, the the z-score is 1.5, and the area or the probability is 0 0.933. If there are two points, like 50 and 60, that's what we call the in-between problem. If that's the case, you just take the difference of these two numbers. So I'll take the difference of between 0.933 minus 0.691 to get 0 0.241, which is about 24%. If you do this type of question, you get a negative number here. That means you subtract in the wrong order. You did 0.69 minus 0.933, which is, you know, to be wrong because you cannot have a negative probability. So if you get a negative probability at the end, you did something wrong. So that, that's a tip for you to go back and fix something. So to answer this question with a sense, what I can say is about 24% of the students score between uh, 50 and 60 points. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. You might have to do simple calculations, just simply calculating the probability. It's not a word problem, just simple calculations. So here are three questions you might encounter. An uh, in-between problem, less than problem, which is number two, and then greater than problem, which is number three. So we'll go by one by one. 
find the area of probability, find the area or the probability that lies between z of negative 1 and then z of 1.0. Again, if you remember, to figure out the normal distribution problems, two steps are, first you need to figure out the z, and then plug it into the norm.s this function. But for this number 1, calculating the z-score has been done for you already, so all you have to do is plug it into norm.s this function for both negative 1 and then 1 1.0. That's what I did here. And again, just like the last problem, I'm going to take the difference between the two, which is 0 0.682689, which is roughly about 68.27%. So next, find the probability that the P of Z is less than 1.65. This is an easy problem because if you recall, Excel always assumes less than or equal to situation. And so, by extension, norm.s this function also assumes less than or equal to situation. So in this case, the z is calculated for you. So all you have to do is plug in the 1.65 to norm.s this function, and then you're done. So this is a very easy question. That's what I did. Norm.s this function, 1.65, which is roughly 95.05%. So lastly, what, how about the case where P of Z is greater than 1.96? So I had to do some manipulations because, again, Excel assumes the less than or equal to situation. So what do we do is that if you recall the area of the shape of a bell curve, it's symmetrical. And the total area underneath the curve of the bell curve is 1 or 100%. So what we do is take advantage of the fact that the area is 1, and so what we'll do is subtract the case of P is Z is probably with Z less than or equal to 1.96, and subtract that value from 1 to get this value. So essentially what I'm doing is this down here, P of Z is greater than or equal to 1.96 is equivalent to doing 1 minus P of Z less than 1.96, which we know how to do. So let's, let me show you how to do that. So the area underneath the curve when P of Z is less than or equal to 1.96 is norm.s this function, 1.96 true, so 0 0.975. I'm going to subtract this number from 1. 1 minus C26, which is this number right here. So the difference is 0 0.024998, or roughly 2.5%. So if you ever see a greater than or equal to situation, what you have to remember is figure out the situation when it's less than or equal to, and take that number from 1, just like down here, to get the correct answer. And so here are the few things you got to be careful about. So lastly, let's do a board problem. Again, normal distribution problem is easy to identify because it has to say normal distribution of some kind. And the mu and then the sigma. And this problem does that, exactly does that. It is a normal distribution problem with the mu of 30 months and the sigma of 6 months. What is the probability that the someone will return to prison after his release within 24 months? Okay. So since I don't have the z, I need to calculate the z. And then z in this case, the x will be 24 months, the mu will be 30, and sigma will be 6. Plug it into the X, plug it into Excel, I get the z score of negative 1, which is down here. 24 minus 30, divide the whole thing divided by 6. Plug it on into norm.s this function, and I get the probability of 0.158655. How did I know that, that I can just plug it into here that I, I was able to assume it's less than or equal to a situation? Well, if you go back to the original problem, it says within 24 months. If you think about that, within 24 months means less than or equal to 24 months. So that's why I had to do any modification. So to answer this question, that probably that someone will return to prison within 24 months after his release is about 16%. All you have to do is just paraphrase the last part and plug in the answer, 16%.
sometimes you see a situation where it might say something like his release over or after 24 months. Then what do you do? So here's what I did down there. Let's say it says if we want to know his chance of returning to prison after 24 months, we make one modification. The Z score is still the same, but then I had to do one minus the situation where it's less than 24 months, like so. If I do that calculation, I get the probability of 0 0.841345, which means it's roughly about 84%. So to answer the question, what's the chance somebody's going to return to prison after 24 months is 84%. That's how you do normal distribution problems.